All right, welcome back to the next video. In the last tutorial, we spent some time setting up uh, Ant Design, and we used a table in our React application to render a row from our database. So we made a, an API request to schools. We took those schools and we rendered them in a table. For this video, I think what we're going to do is we're going to spend some time moving into a form so that we can add more schools. Uh, we can we'll be doing a bit of front end. And then eventually we'll be creating some functionality in the back end to create new schools with those requests so that we can start to populate this data or this table with more data. And as we populate this table with more data, we'll run into issues like how we set up page nation, uh, how we do filtering, et cetera, as you sort of just get more data in general. So to start, um, I think what we need is a button to go to a page where there's going to be a form to create schools. So uh, this music's really loud, one sec. Okay. So to start, let's get a button in here. If we go to end design, we can see how they use buttons. This one should be relatively simple because we're just literally just using a button. Um, here we are. So you can import a button and then they have types, primary, yada, yada, yada. So if we go back to pages, schools, and The school table, I think the button should be part of the school table because a lot of the time whenever we have a table, we're gonna have a header and then perhaps some action buttons. This is just one of the action buttons. So if we go here, um, we can, oh. so let's import the, the, we already have space, import button. Let's move the table into one singular parent component. And then let's just do a button of type primary that says uh, create school. So after everything's running, um, I already have my front end running and my back end running. If we go back to the app, we now have a button that says create school. And sort of ignore the formatting of the pages right now. Once we have a bit more functionality, we'll start to set up sort of our foundational design, everything so that it looks a bit nicer. But if we click create school, it does nothing as expected. So I'm going to add some functionality to that. To start, we're going to need a new page. Um, this one can probably be just a file to start. Like I said in the past, sometimes I make pages folders if they're quite if they're going to be quite complicated. A form shouldn't be too bad. Um, so we're going to create a create school page and we'll import react one second the dog's doing something weird so we're going to import react and then we'll do we'll create a, a component or like a, a function the function is going to be called create school and it's going to eventually return some HTML. Um, and if we go back just to double check, so our return type on this is going to be a function component. And that should alleviate that there as well. Strings must be single quotes. We should really get the linter running when we save too, so that I don't have to like see all these all this red stuff um, immediately when we start. But by default, we're going to export that component from this file. What's this return saying? Expect indentation of two spaces, but found four. Um, I set the setup. Can I just like change my default? Quick fix. Okay, that should maybe have fixed it. All right, so now we have a page that we can navigate to. We're gonna to wanna to add this to the router so that it has its own route. So right now when we go to schools, oh, actually, before I move any further, schools might not have to be an entire page on its own. It could be a component that you hide and show depending on what stage you are in the schools page. 
So I'm actually going to just forget everything I did, take this file and move create school into components. And also our naming convention is all of a sudden off. So let's just go back to dashes. So now we're going to have a create school component and we're just going to show that component when the user clicks the button. Um, so this is a form. That's all our components going to do so far. And if we go back to our schools page, where we do everything schools, um, we can import create school and now we can put that component here, but we'll want to hide and show it depending on what state we're on. So if we just go back, you can see we've got our table and then we see this is a form down here. We will want to only show this after you click create school. So um, Okay, and the create school button is actually down in school table. Um, but we're gonna create a state variable called is creating. So is uh, is creating um, is, what do we wanna call this? Whether or not the page is in the creating state. It could be editing as well. Um, Hmm. What do we want to call this variable? Maybe variable is going to be so uh, difficult sometimes. This one shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, to progress the video, I'm just going to say is uh, form visible. It's very clear. Set is form visible. And by default, it will not be visible. Um, And then now we can say only show create school if his form visible. Okay, I move from I've been moving back and forth between React and Vue, so I keep messing up the syntax. But uh, now we need to be able to set whether the form is visible. And to do that, we could say we could pass in a prop to school table. Um, so that it has access to this function. And then in school table, yeah, open it please. Uh, one of the props, we're gonna have school prop and we're also gonna have, um, where's the type, is there a type function? Uh, Okay, so it's a bit too general. Better solutions. Okay, so it is a button click. Is it a mouse event? That's a mouse event, right? Let's return something. It's not a mouse event, actually. Um, I wonder if there's one specifically for use uh, set state function type. Okay, this feels like simpler and easy to read. 
Uh, this is a function that takes in a Boolean and returns nothing. So now we have that here. And now on click, we can call it. Um, and we're going to run into some more issues right away, actually. Oh, it's not. Oh, we are going to still run into some issues, though. Um, really got to get the on save winter going. Probably do it in the next video. Um, expected one parameters, but got zero, and that's because it is expecting a value of Boolean. Um, I think instead of saying set is form visible, which actually like sets this, we should change it to no, oh, no, we can, we can. That's fine. When you click this button, we're passing in true. So now the school has the power to set whether the form is visible, which is fine. I think that's fine practice. So if we refresh, we click create school. Now the form is visible. Um, in addition to that, I think when you're looking at the form, you probably don't need to see the table, uh, but maybe at some point in the future we are going to show like a breadcrumb or something useful. Um, and I don't have like a long-term plan for, uh, how this component is set up. So this sort of like thing here where we're doing like is form visible and is form visible for both of these. I mean, it's not that nice to read. It's kind of weird. It's like, what, you just have two components. Why wouldn't you do like a, if this render else, render something else. And we might, but I'm not sure what else I'm going to put on this page. So, but honestly, it, it might be a while. So actually is, if the form is visible, and we run to create school. Otherwise, render the school table. Oops. Uh, I can't type. Um, expected new line. Does it not like it? What? Let's run our ledger and see what it changes it to. Yes, land, MPX fix, yeah, there we go. Okay, I guess that's the form that it wants. It's kind of weird, but we'll uh, we'll roll with it. Um, if we want to change it, we can change our linter, and then we can tell the linter to fix it all. So, but there you go. There we go. Now, so now, if we go back to our app, uh, you can click this. You're now at the form, and then now you can't get back um, because we haven't done that yet. But you be able to get back as well. So. Now let's dive into the form. Let's see if Ant Design has maybe a form template we can start with, or or at least like inputs. Uh, there we go. Oh, here we are. Form. Okay, let's just get their basic form. And I don't open that in your window. I just want to copy the code. And if we go back to our create school page. Let's copy it down below. Um, 
get the imports we want, put those up there. And then I think the rest we can copy because we don't have much in our uh, in our components. I just noticed you can do react.fc as a short term for function component. It's kind of cool. Um, missing return type. There is no return type. It's probably why. Um, and I don't even know why I'm fixing this because we might even remove them. What are these for? On finish and on finish failed. Okay, let's get rid of the code that we copied. Let's get rid of this. Um, oh, interesting. And D has form rules already built in. We like that. Okay, so let's refresh. Uh, let's just make sure that renders. Uh, it doesn't like the extra semicolons. There, there. Okay, we're gonna. Also, my scrolling is super weird. Sometimes I'm scrolling. And it's just like not picking it up, but. Um, if we refresh, we know the crate's cool, and there's our form. You see how a lot of usernames and passwords on localhost. Okay. I wonder what sort of rules there are, actually. Let's, um, I didn't realize they had rules built in. Take a look at this code. They have just dynamic rules here. Rules check neck. Okay. Oh, it's required if check neck is clicked. Oh, I see. Wow, that's cool. So you can write your custom rules, and then I'm sure they have a list too of rules you can use. Needs to be checked, something breaks the rule. Wow. Okay, so we will be using that in the future for sure. I was actually gonna run, like roll my own form validation, but this will make things easier. Okay. Um, actually, let's look at this example real quick again. Scrolling feels really weird on this page. Um, can I look at the example? Is it above? Okay. Um, next step, let's actually make this field that we want it to be. So. If we go look at our model, which I'm not going to do right away, you would know that we only have a name field on our schools right now. So we can just put name here, name, and it's required, please input a school name or something like that. Um, and this is gonna say create for now. Okay, I'm a little bit confused. They have a few uh, props set up that I haven't seen before. That kind of um, on finish trigger after submitting the form and verifying data successfully. So that's sort of their data validation step. I wonder if then this is sort of like an on finish. Actually, it's not really an on, or sorry, on submit. It's not really an on finish. But let's take a peek. So if we run test and click create. Okay, I accidentally pricked back. So let's open the inspector and it says it's going to call and select a success message. So test, create. All right, so there's our object name. Really cool. Wow. So here is when we're actually going to make a request 
to oh, I just that's crazy powerful uh, a request to uh, make our form so if you go look at our example here oops actually let's not copy all of it so this is our our code for requesting the schools you can sort of reuse it for creating the schools except can you make us asynchronous is it going to complain it returns a promise right and the promise promise returns uh, the process the completion of an asynchronous operation. Oh yeah, I think that's right. Gotta change this over the let's do it right away. Okay, so instead of a get we're doing a post to schools and we're just doing it with the data. And let's just put the data straight in there. You can see they have an any type here. We probably want to um, create an interface of uh, school here. Then they have a name, which is a string. So this is actually a school being passed in. And then we'll do something when it succeeds, but for right now, we can just ignore that. Uh, I'll finish. Oh, it's expecting a void return. So I don't know. What we can do is um, move it into a function like we did with the other request. So there's just going to be a submit school or yeah, submit school method where we'll do all the, all the fun stuff um, with the values, which are also going to be a type school because we're just passing it along. And then in here, we can actually just run uh, this. Oh, wait, it's not this. I'm gonna just run submit school. And missing return type. So the return type has to be void. And promises must be awaited. So that returns nothing as well. Then we can't use await. So I wonder if. Um, Like then, I always thought then catches were sort of like people were over them. They weren't that nice to use, but it seems to be sort of encouraging to you to use one. So now we don't need that because it's going to be inside the thing. That's not an asynchronous method anymore. Yeah, I'm, like I, I, I mean, try catch with a weight is so much nicer to use, but then it becomes an asynchronous method, then it returns a promise, and some things don't allow that. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I don't actually know how you use a try catch here because you can't use a weight without turning it into an asynchronous method. So let's just let's just move forward. Um, I'm gonna do some research, so I'm not like babbling on the video. Uh, but this should make a request. So if we refresh, we clear that. We go to our create school. We put in the name. We go to our network tab and clear it, and then click create. You can see we got a post request. The response is you call this URL via post, but the URL doesn't end in a slash, and you haven't you don't have to append the slash for it. So uh, um, I think. So we're only seeing this error because we're in uh, debug mode on Django. This is a Django error. Um, and we want to force an appended slash. But it's going to be annoying if we have to put the slash in all of our requests. So we'll probably do that somewhere else, maybe in the... Well, we'll figure it out. Uh, so if we click create again, now we get a 403. 
Authentic authentication credentials were not provided. So that endpoint that we have created, if we go look at it, uh, by default, we're using our default permission classes, which can be found in the settings. But if we just set this to anyone can do anything they want on this, which is not encouraged, but we're going to do it for this. And then we click create. We'll go to 201. A new school has been created. And then if we refresh this page, you can see we have our new school. Ta-da. Progress. Um, so a few things happen there. We'll want to see if we can use try catch instead of banning or try catch? Try <laughs> Yeah, we'll want to see if we can use try catch instead of the uh then catch format. Um, but we made a post request. We'll want to fix this so we're not like forcing developers to remember the slash. We just want it to be uh, be done on its own. Uh, and then we totally disregarded our authentication or our permission classes so anyone can make this request. So we're going to continue ignoring that. And then once we like where our school and our school's form and table are at, I think we'll, we'll get into authentication soon after that, but we're not going to do any more endpoints until we do our authentication. So we can work on this one and we'll eventually get to authentication and authorizations. Only logged in users can make this request. Um, to start, let's see if there, if we can find a way for Axios append slash to post request. So this is about preventing it. Um, Yeah, interceptor, okay. Let's see if we can go to that. So if we go to our plugins, this is our plugin here. You can create interceptors in here. I didn't even know I didn't have them set up. You can create an interceptor in here, so the instance and interceptors are going to do all these things for us. Oops. Interface uh, is this like I'm sorry, it might have this type actually. Uh, Uh, let's see, Axios uh, interceptor type script type. There it is, request config. So it'd be very silly for me to redefine that on my own. So they have a, a type of Axios request config. Doesn't exist on that type. Uh, As URL and it has a oh no add trailing slash. I go back to those docs really quick or that conversation. You can do this with an interceptor. If config add trailing slash, we're trying to we're trying to only add features that we use by most as a as a otherwise we should use interceptors, fair enough. Um, the URL is possibly undefined. 
Was ist denn das? I think we want to do up like if method. Uh, oh, if config dot method equals post as well. And we'll want to do it if post put hash. We want to do a problem, I think, actually. We don't need to look at the method. Okay. Okay, so if config.url exists. Please handle them explicitly. It's probably going to say like is undefined. Yeah. Okay, so that should append a slash when we're making requests if there isn't already one. So now we can remove this and this request should still succeed when we post. So if we go to create school, do test two, create a request, click create. There we go, it depends on the slash. And if we went back there or refresh, you can see we have our second school. Awesome. So I think another one thing we want to do is after the success or uh, if this succeeds, we still we also want to set is the form visible to false. So if the form succeeds, we can just like do that. This should be a prop, and then it's also going to complain like, what are your prop types? Uh, how do we do that in the other one? The nice thing is once you do this once, you uh, can just copy code all over the place because I'm not remembering anything. Okay, so we've got our props, we don't have schools in this one, but we do have that. And then if we go back here, we'll want to pass that into here as well. There we are. So now, after we submit the form, it should just go back to the table. Ah, uh, and it should request the data or it should add the data to the table. I think adding the data to the table is probably better so instead of using this method, we're actually going to use a different method. We're going to create our own method in here called a uh, let's see. Um, like push new data or uh, uh, insert new data. There we go. Because it might later on, it might be updated as well. Anyway, um, and that's going to get a type of uh, school. And at the end of it, then we'll set is the uh, form visible false. But we're also going to add the doodle, the doodle, the data into the schools list here. So we can go here, we can go here. And then if we go back to our create school, this prop is like this now. The value is actually a value of school. And there we go. Response to data is of type school. We're calling insert data. And what is it saying? School is clear, but it's never read. Missing return type. There's no return type when we do this. Cannot find name school. We're gonna have to move our types into a, a nice location as well. For now, I'm just gonna put any there. And okay, so using set state with or yes, like use state with arrays can be kind of weird when you're inserting and removing data. But I believe what we can do is take schools and filter it um, if the school ID or name is not equal to a new school name that we have just created then filter it out and then what you can do is 
Oops. Filter data, is it append, push, push? We're gonna push our new school and then we can set schools to that updated list. Is that append? A range of type in is not a to a parameter of type never. This is a list of schools, right? What's a list of endings? Oh, that's not what the type is. Set state action. Okay, let's look up this one. This is something to do with the. Uh, well, I guess we'll see what it's something to do with. Oh, that doesn't sound right because we tried to just do that. Something to do with new state. Really? I didn't even know you could define the type. Wow. So these are actually a type any, but it will be a type school. Wow, okay. So now if we refresh, hypothetically, if you do test four, it's gonna add the data. There we are. So there's a new row. Um, push to, uh, to front over a, is it unshift? Unshift, okay. So rather than push, which could push it out of vision for the user, we're gonna use unshift, which will put it at the front of the list so that the user can see the row they just updated. Um, and later on, if we're feeling clever, what we can also do is put this in another table and we can keep track of all of the rows that have been updated while the user was on that screen and highlight them so they can say like, hey, you just updated this row and this row and this row. But for now, this is pretty good. So now we have uh, a table, a form, and you can go to the form, you can click create, and you can add a new row. Uh, you can see here test six is at the top instead of the bottom now. And if we refresh, it'll probably go to the bottom, yeah. Um, now, I think we probably wanna spend some time, we're gonna probably stop adding functionality. We're gonna spend some time again, like doing configuration. So we're gonna make things look pretty. We're gonna get styling set up. We're gonna get our linter on save set up. Um, and we might see if we can fix that then cache that I don't really like. And then we'll improve the functionality on the name or the form on the table. And then, yeah, we'll see where we go. But yeah, I think I'm gonna call this video here and I'll see you in the next one.